So this tutorial is really going to be about saving time and doing things the most efficient way when possible. Uh, I recently just seen this animation that I was looking at when trying to come up with an idea. And so it's just an animation of a bunch of boxes. But the thing is, is that once I play this, we can see that the boxes go from kind of chaos. Let's back this up a couple of frames. It goes from utter chaos, right? to uniform um, rows and columns. And that isn't super difficult to do, but if we were to make individual masks and backgrounds for each particular box, that could be pretty time consuming. So I wanted to show you a, a way in which that we could actually do that, that it wouldn't be that time consuming to be able to just simply move them just like that. Different ways, you know, there's really tons of different ways to do the same end product just about how much time do you want to save and also how much control do you want over uh, a particular uh, group of nodes that you're working on or a particular effect that you're working on because the method i'm going to show you i'm going to show you both ways the way that you're going to have the most control and then a way in which is going to be super quick and easy lightweight on your computer but you're not going to have as much control you will have some control but yeah let's just jump right in but before I do, I just wanted to quite show you guys my website, um, it's jrtv.com. I do have a new pro membership that allows you to uh, get any type of DaVinci Resolve support. If you ever do need that or Fusion support, you can take a look at that, um, as well as everything on my website. If you want some free templates, I do have a bunch of like paid templates, titles and that sort of thing. So let's just jump right into the project itself. So this is how you would traditionally set up something like that. So like, let's say we want three little dots and we want them to move. All we would really do is just have them the position, the center position, we would just have them, you know, set up how we want. And then, you know, we can go to, let's go to frame 30 here and we'll add a keyframe to all of them, right? Cause that's where we want everything to settle at. So we'll come a little bit before that and let's now move them um, to where we would think that we might want them to be um, starting the animation. So we have them like that. So uh, if we take a look at this, we start at frame two, we go to frame 30 for that perfect little line. So if I was to play this now, we have them going right over. You could add little things in here to make it look better by coming up to the spline, turning on all of these, then clicking this button to see our keyframes. Then we could hit F and add that easing in there just to make it things look a little more polished, right? So something like that. Now this is going to give you the utmost control. We can take every little dot, move its position where it's going to start and end. We can then go in and change the spline to add some easing in and so on. So that's going to be the first way in which that we can do it. The next way that we can do this is if I come over here to A and we take a look at the A project, we can see that we have four little dots and they're all coming back together looks pretty much the same way. Yes, the size is a little different, but you can always change that to, you know, match perfectly. So how many nodes do you think are actually here? If we take a look at the first one, we had four nodes here, right? We had three masks and a background to get the actual color. For this one, we have four dots and um, yeah. So how many would we have here? If we actually ungroup this, we can see that we still only have four. This is the power of using were referred to as shape layers. So shape layers, if you haven't seen them, we can go into add tools, shape, and there's a bunch of different things in here that are shape layers. Now, the cool thing about shape layers is that they're all vectored. And that pretty much just means that they will run significantly faster on your system and you can scale them to any size you want. Um, and then once you have everything set up and now, Granted, this is like the most simplified way to explain what vectors are, but once you have everything uh, set up how you want it to go, then it's going to go into what is referred to as a renderer, and that's when we're actually gonna get pixel data, something that we can see. So every, all shape nodes have to go into a renderer so that we can actually have some type of image. So that's something that you'll see here with all shape layers. And one thing that you'll notice with shape layers is that you can't feed them into anything but the renderer. So that's just another little thing to know. So how does this all work? So we first start off with our ellipse. Now that's pretty self-explanatory. We have, you know, the height, the width, 
obviously because it's a perfect circle currently angle doesn't really mean anything we have offset we also have a color that we can pick so that's going into the renderer now we have our little um dot next we can go into what is referred to as a grid now this is going to make all of our rows and columns so if we come into the grid and look in the inspector we have so many rows and so many columns they're just referring to them as xy cells and then we have an offset so the spacing between each row or column that's going to be what's there and as you can see i have a little bit of an animation here um they just pretty much get smaller together right so that's uh, what is going on there. So then what we have is we have a jitter. Now jitter is going to be what is going to make this look really good. Now, just like the grid, how we had this XY offset, we also have the XY offset here, but we can see that we're picking ranges. If I come over here, we're picking a range instead of a specific value. And what that means is that each particular um, thing that's fed into this, every vector shape that's fed into this is going to get something random within that offset. What that allows us to do is get something that is very chaotic. So as we bring them together and we have them close together and going down to zero, it then brings it all back down to the perfect row and column like that we were seeing uh, when we were just looking at just the grid. And that's pretty much the, you know, the extent of how this works. So we could take this a step further and we could go over into B. Now, if we take a look at B, all we really have is just a lot more rows and columns. And if we bring it back, we can see that we have something that looks very chaotic and they all come back together and look perfect. Same exact setup, no extra nodes. The more nodes you have, typically the longer it takes for something to render. That's just something to know. If we were to set this up the same way that we have uh, all of our stuff here, there'd be a significant amount of mass. So we're back down to just four. Now everything looks white. What if we wanted to add some color into this? Well, uh, I did that too. So as you can see here, we just have utter chaos and it comes back and it looks perfect. So that's pretty much it. There isn't a lot more to this. There are a couple of different things that are in this uh, just because we needed two different colors. So we have two different uh, ellipses. And as you can see, if we come into the one, we have one that's green, come into the other, we have it that it is a uh, red-ish color. And then all it is, is they're just right next to each other. That's all, just two next to each other. Then they go into the grid, as you can see. We, all we're doing here is just making the rows and columns. I just wanted it to fill the whole screen so it looked good. And we have the same sort of thing that I was doing before with um, just changing the size of it like that. It just adds a you know an extra piece of the uh, uh, animation. And then that's just going into a jitter. And that is really it to get this chaos that then looks really good. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how we would take something that looks very chaotic and make it look good. And then the other thing to go with this is because this is all vectors and we're all just using the shape uh, information here, um, everything renders super, super fast. If we ever wanted to add in motion blur, we can just come into the renderer. We do have the motion blur settings there. Uh, if that was something that you wanted, but I just wanted to show you how you could do this just because I seen that um, this little thing here and it would really suck to know that someone spent all the time to have these all set up in, in a way like this and then uh, you know when they line them up they're moving individual masks because that would be extremely time consuming um, but whatever gets the job done you know the end product is all that matters um, but yeah there are other ways to do different things depending on what you have going on uh, let me know in the comments if you guys found this interesting. If you do use vectored uh, stuff, all the shape stuff, let me know um, what tools that you like in there. Maybe something to go over. Uh, if there are any other animations that you do see online from like Vox and stuff like that, that are like pretty good animations and you're kind of curious how you would be able to recreate those using Fusion within DaVinci Resolve. Uh, leave those down in the comments as well. I'll take a look. And if it's something that is realistic that I can do, you know, in a sub 
uh, 30 minute uh, tutorial, I will definitely let you guys know at least, you know, little aspects here and there on how to do the animation. I feel like most of this other stuff is pretty easy. Maybe I could go over how to add in all these other animations like this because that is also pretty easy. Uh, but I know that some people that are now watching my YouTube channels have, or my YouTube channel, my videos, uh, haven't seen how to do a lot of this stuff or even making all of these different icons and how that all works. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this uh, useful in some way, shape or form, but that's pretty much it. My name's JR, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one, peace.